If you've been keeping up on tech news then, you would know that the iOS App Store recently started to allow for game emulators and iPhone users are going absolutely crazy. Personally, I'm happy for them. It's a big win for game emulation and it's a big step for Apple as they start to move towards a less restrictive ecosystem. But as an Android enthusiast, retro gamer, and daily foldable user, I really wanted to show you what I think is the perfect setup for Android emulation. If you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you really love the content, we have a new 9to5Google channel membership that comes with a handful of goodies for those that are looking for a bit more. When it comes to Android emulation, my favorite setup as of late has been the Google Pixel Fold because it's so similar to an actual Nintendo DS. To me, the Nintendo DS hardware holds a special place in my heart because it reminds me of a time where I didn't have to worry about bills or adult responsibilities, so naturally using the Pixel Fold in that way brings back that nostalgic feeling. You can see what I mean immediately when you fire up a game. In my use case, I'm using the Jurassic DS emulator, which really should be a whole video in itself, but paired with the Pixel Fold, you can see the experience is almost perfect. The form factor is effectively one-to-one -to, -one to an actual DS console with the dual screen setup featuring similar aspect ratios. The bottom display is big enough to have the virtual buttons laid out in a decent size while also giving the touchscreen enough space to easily interact with the menus. Of course, the Pixel Fold's hinge has enough friction to be used at all the classic angles, and since it's a foldable, we can condense the whole unit down into a smaller, more portable device with a similar footprint when not in use. Not to mention, the Pixel Fold's hardware in general is great. We have a super sharp 120Hz OLED display that really does breathe new life into these older games, decent speakers, and probably the most premium feeling handheld with that frosted glass back and polished aluminum frame. Those few items alone make the Pixel Fold a fun system to emulate games on, and if you told a young 14-year-old Jordan that you'd be able to do this on a smartphone, I probably wouldn't have believed you. And if you're really crazy and want to take things a step further, emulating games with physical hardware buttons gives the complete experience. I'm using the Backbone 1 gaming controller, which to my surprise works really well both on the Pixel Fold hardware and the Jurassic emulator software as it allows you to remove the virtual on-screen buttons for that full screen satisfaction. Overall, with the popularity of iOS emulation, I could not stay silent as an Android enthusiast or more importantly, as a foldable enthusiast. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you should go out and buy a Pixel Fold solely to emulate games, although the use price is in literal free fall right now, but I wanted to show off how perfect some Android hardware is for this use case. I will say though, the Pixel Fold is not the only device I wanted to show off as the Z Fold 5 is also good in its own right, and arguably the better choice if you're trying to play a wide variety of games, not just Nintendo DS or Game Boy. Personally, I think the aspect ratio is better suited more for the design for television, console-like games like the GameCube, with the Dolphin emulator or Switch games with Yuzu. Plus, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip I feel is more equipped to handle those high-intensity emulators compared to the Tensor G2 on the Pixel Fold. For my gaming sessions, I've been doing a playthrough of The Wind Waker that brings back such great memories, although I found the touch controls were a bit annoying to play around with. So again, with the Backbone 1 controller or really anything, you can remove all the virtual buttons for a full screen experience that feels even better than a Switch in my opinion. Finally, one last setup I wanted to highlight is with the Z Flip series. I've never had a Game Boy SP growing up, but if you did, then you probably see where I'm going with this. In my eyes, I find the form factor alone does a lot to bring back that classic SP feel, especially with Game Boy games. The Z Flip 5 mimics that classic clamshell design like we saw back in the day. The hinge, again, is pretty great for getting a comfortable viewing angle, and the taller screen becomes more beneficial to spread out virtual controls for DS games in portrait mode or Game Boy games in landscape. Not to mention, when you're done, you just slap that bad boy close like you would in 2003. For my Game Boy Advance games, I'm using the Pizza Boy emulator that has this custom skin pre-installed, which definitely does add to the look. So that's everything regarding game emulation on modern Android phones, but does anyone remember the Xperia Play by any chance? Released in 2011, running on Android 2.3 Gingerbread, it was a super ambitious project at the time as it was a smartphone that opened up into a full-on controller in the classic PlayStation layout. I don't think we've seen anything like this since, but it had a D-pad, touch 
touch-sensitive areas to mimic analog sticks, and real left and right trigger buttons sitting alongside the volume key. Obviously, it isn't a great phone for today's standards, but for game emulation, this thing is so fun to play around with. I'd say the thing that kills me is why we never saw a sequel to this thing. Apparently, there was one in the works, or at least some prototype images were leaked showing off a larger display and more modern design, but unfortunately, it was cancelled. Maybe because gaming phones were not popular back then, or maybe because Sony didn't want to take a gamble since the original Xperia Play wasn't a huge success. Either way, it's a really cool piece of Android history, and call me crazy, but I think this concept was way ahead of its time. Hopefully, we see Sony take another crack at this sometime in the future, but in the meantime, I'll be keeping the first-gen Xperia Play in my smartphone collection. That said, hope you guys enjoyed this brief look into the world of Android hardware and its emulation capabilities. Leave a comment and let me know what your setup is if you have one. For now, I'm getting out of here. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.